I am here today with Cross Counter Asia Z. Now you've been traveling a lot over the last couple of weeks. Can you give us a brief sort of rundown of what you've been up to? Uh, well, we I came from Tokyo all the way to Stockholm, Sweden, and then we went to Yunshiping for DreamHack. And that was my first time both in Sweden and in DreamHack. It was massive. Uh, we're trying to cover a little more esports now because uh, we think we have a firm grasp on the fighting game community. So we're trying to expand into not only that, but also anime and whatnot. Um, but coming to DreamHack and then coming here to Insomnia, is this the uh, 47th iteration? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quite amazing uh, how they have such a long legacy here. It's sort of, it's different. It's much smaller here, but there's alcohol on premise and it's quite cheap and I think <laughs> everyone is taking advantage of that. So it's interesting to see how different communities around the world sort of envision their gaming utopia. So, you know, we in America we have Evo, uh, in Sweden they have DreamHack, of course, and you guys here in England uh, have Insomnia. So it's nice to see a different variation across different regions. Yeah, I, I have to ask, because I saw on Haunts' Twitter he doesn't think anything of the food. Now, as a British person, I'm uh -huh. okay with it. What do you make of the food here? Just tell me, give it to me straight. It's expensive and it's bland. Right, okay. Yeah. Right but between the eyes. It's a good thing that you guys, well, in recent years they've been clamping down, but it's a pretty good immigration policy here. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, with different cultures, they also bring their cuisine along with them. And so I've enjoyed, the best food I've had here is from like Chinese takeout or yeah, Indian takeout. Yeah. Um, but I think it's important and I don't know which party it is that's trying to clamp down on the immigration, but I understand that side, but for the good also, of food, right? For the uh, as a gastronome, I, I hope that more people bring in their culture and their cuisine with them. All right, and I know you're here commentating today. What's your? Because I know you were commentating at this year's Evo. Uh -huh. What's your history of commentating? Like, what's your history with the FGC? Uh, Evo was my biggest gig, but yeah. I didn't do it until I was able to commentate for Canada Cup. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And I think it's important because there are. If you really think, if you have the confidence to commentate, then go for it. Ask James, ask David, uh, Ultra David, hey, can I jump on the mic with you? If you yeah. really have what it takes. So you asked them? Yeah, I did. Like before oh, wow. I had a chance, I think it was in Canada Cup. And the thing is, commentators, they do need a break because their voices can get forced. Especially yeah, yeah, if yeah. Uh, you know, if they're really hype. Yeah. So they need to switch out. They need to go to the bathroom breaks. They need to uh, get dinner. Yeah, yeah, And so yeah. when they swap out, that is your opportunity to hop on the mic, say a few lines, and if you're really good at it, I think they'll keep you there. But don't be daunted by, oh, you know, the, the set guys have a monopoly on it, I'll never get into that <laughs> yeah, commentator yeah. circuit. If you really have what it takes, I suggest that you put your uh, best foot forward, and that's what I did, and I wound up commentating for Evo, and I was very fortunate that the Cannon Brothers uh, allowed me to do that. Yeah, yeah, no, that's great. Now, you mentioned something really interesting earlier. You said you're expanding into eSports. Yeah. Why do you think there's this sort of gulf between the FGC, or what's traditionally seen as the FGC, and the esports community? A golf. Uh, if you wouldn't describe it that way, then... No, it is. I mean, you can see there's a huge difference in terms of sponsorship yeah. dollars, or pounds in this case. <laughs> uh, can I give a non-PC answer? No, do it. say what you want. We're student media, so if you want to start swearing, think, go for that too. No, I don't need to swear. I just noticed that in esports, it's predominantly, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, aside from the small contingents of Korean players, it's predominantly white. Yeah, no, no, no. And I... white people get shit done. <laughs> they write those nice proposals, they get, the propo they get the nice sponsorship money. Yeah. And if you look at the FGC, it's a bit more... It's, it's very rainbow, multicultural. Right? Like, it's uh, very, like, it's one of the like, true international communities. It really is, it's a melting pot. Um, and sometimes... And, and I love that. I love the diversity there. But sometimes when too many people are speaking different things, it's like the uh, Leaning Tower of Babel, is it? Yeah. And no voice is truly heard. There's no yeah. unity. And I think that we've been held back somewhat by our disparity. We don't have any unity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that might be a problem. But at the same time, I understand that one of the brilliant, you know, the beautiful things about the fighting game community is that we are multicolored. We're a huge melting pot rainbow. And we can effectively do and say what we want as well. Like, I mean, I've seen, I saw MLG Dallas and like uh -huh. the trash talk before yeah. the StarCraft matches was so restrained. It was like, I know you're a good player, but I'm going to win. And the other guy was like, you are a good player, yeah. 
but it's actually me who is going to win. Whereas, like you see, like you know, all the, all the old videos of Yipes playing Marvel too. Like the fighting community is a lot more, a lot more gritty and stuff like that. So yeah, I hope for more white people to come to the fighting game community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I'm, I'm here representing, I guess. Thank you very much. No, that's cool. All right. Well, you. You do a lot of interviews. I've seen a lot of like really like offbeat, really confident interviews of cosplay girls and stuff. How do you get into that? Because you have a really unique style. Uh, my policy is to not ask anything that can be Googled. Right, okay. Because everyone has a smartphone or iPhone these days, and yeah, you can yeah, just yeah. Google information. So I first Google the person that I'm going to interview if they're big, and see what information is there, and then ask something that I couldn't find on yeah. Google. Yeah, that's just at the I know, I saw your interview with Vanessa Wedge, for example, and you asked her what it's like to be a part of a community that's 99% guys, which I think is really interesting. Like, that's the sort of question that you're not going to get in an interview. Like, even like one like this, I guess, it's very like, listen, what do you think about esports? Like, you know, like one that's very well, sort of like... You want to bore your subject. Yeah. Um, and so I need to keep them off balance because, especially if you're someone, you know, as gorgeous as Vanessa, there's going to be a lot of people approaching her for an interview. So how can you differentiate yourself from the other media groups that have been asking her and pestering her for an interview, you know? Yeah. Well, that's that's cool. right. And what do you think, lastly, what do you think constitutes a member of the FGC? As there's more overlap between the esports community and the fighting game community, what do you think constitutes a member of the FGC? What constitutes a member? I think, well, there's a, it's, the FGC is sort of a misnomer in my opinion because Really, like you can see here, we have the Capcom booth. And aside from there, we have the 3D fighters. I think there's also Marvel. So the communities aren't as closely knit as one would think. Yeah, yeah. The FGC is an all-encompassing term. But really, do I have anything in common with someone that plays Smash Brothers or Dead or Alive 5? Not as much as you would think. Like, we share the common bond of having a joystick, maybe. <laughs> um, but I think there needs to be a little more clarification and the, yeah, in the FGC when you talk about it. It doesn't, when we say, oh, you know, I represent the FGC. No, you don't. You no, represent no, no. your small genre, that title that you like. And that's about it. Right, okay. Right. So, but if there's one thing that unifies us all, mm, poverty, grinding poverty. <laughs> yeah. Well, all right, you've been absolutely fantastic. Ladies and gentlemen, Cross Counter Asia Z. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Uh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Have a lovely day. All right, please.